two of them, you know, were quite different. If you if you remember that, my mother was a spark plug and a gun ho person, and and dad was much more restrained and so forth. And he, for example, one thing I remember that almost every year he'd say, uh, Josephine, I don't think we can have camp this summer. <laughs> we haven't had enough rain. <laughs> oh, nonsense, Frank. Of course we'll have camp. Then she would go ahead and have camp. <laughs> um, I think that, uh, that without Dad, she might have, you know, given away that <laughs> everything. And without without her, he might have been quite stuffy, I think. <laughs> so anyway, I have something to read, which is a poem that he wrote for Mother on her birthday, April 12th, 1953. This is, by the way, is a book of his poetry. Anyway, <clears throat> JWD, one and all will agree, doesn't want birthday presents from you and from me. She would rather you gave of your clothes and your bucks to the service committee, refugees, or lamed up. <laughs> if you gave her some clothes, she would feel freer to give her old ones to Europe or Korea. You cannot give comics, you cannot give gum, you cannot give lipstick, you cannot give rum. Her shoes can be sold by her husband once more, her glasses can come from Woolworth's 10 cent store. <laughs> Surprise party I gave once and only did find she had a committee to that day assigned. <laughs> <laughs> but we who do know her and would never harm her believe that she has certain cracks in her armor. <laughs> <laughs> These gifts that we bring, though they aren't much to view, do bring all of our love and affection to you. Oh, that's right. Josephine's early life, yes, she wasn't very happy as a child, apparently. Her mother, I guess, was rather socially ambitious, and uh, Josephine didn't care for that. I believe her father was uh, very rich at one time, and then he lost all his money, but she married Frank and took care of the problem. He arrived by train at the North Cohasset Railroad Station, where I met him with horse and buggy and brought him home for lunch. After lunch, we went for a walk in the woods, and I began to find out a little about him. I could tell he was a nature lover because every so often he would stop to identify a flower or a tree, and he liked animals, and my dog took to him at once. This is a portrait of my dad, painted by his father, Frank Duvenek Sr., a well-known American painter and teacher who had studied in Munich. These are his students painted this in Venice. This is also in Venice. This is a portrait of his mother, Lizzie Boot. After a long courtship, they settled in Florence, Italy, where Frank was born in 1886. In 1888, the family moved to Paris, at that time the art center of the world. Lizzie contracted pneumonia in the winter and died leaving a small child and a bereaved husband behind. Dad was brought back to this country to be raised by his mother's family in Waltham, Massachusetts. Frank graduated from the Harvard Engineering School. He followed his interest into what he cared about, which was engineering, good at mathematics and physics, and uh, didn't care an awful lot about law and religion and all that stuff. Well, I should say we married in 1913. And the following winter, we went to Japan and China. And this was somewhat of a new thing. It wasn't done at that time. He was working in the Merrimack Mills there as an, as an engineer. Came home tired and closed the door, but that didn't stop the wind from blowing in under the door. Made the carpets fly around and it was snowing. 
He said, Josephine, have you had enough? <laughs> she said, yes. <laughs> well, he decided to come to California. But he came out here uh, just during the war and joined the Army soon after he got here. I was in the Army at that time. I enlisted in the Army in, in 1917. I was shipped out in 1918. I packed up and moved into Palo Alto. My two eldest children had been born on the East Coast and had become delightful companions for me during Frank's long absence. The big event of the summer was Frank's return. <laughs> 